This program discusses a disturbing and violent crime. Viewer discretion is advised. Today, the dramatic conclusion of In Cold Blood, a daughter's brutal murder. She was 12 years old. I mean, she was a baby. Shanda Scherer's murder by four teenage girls made national headlines with its brutality. Now, one of the murderers is out of jail. We all know she is here. What would you do? If any time you want it stopped, you just tell me and it stops. What would you say? She can come out now. If you were face to face with one of the women who murdered your 12 year old daughter. Why? Why did you do it to her? You doused her with gasoline. While she was begging for my mom. Tell me how somebody does that. And a tearful request. That's the only thing I ask of you. As this mother and daughter lash out at Shanda's killer. You're sick. Dogs don't tear their prey apart the way you all tore her apart. You were there when she was stabbed. You were there when she was lit on fire. Who does this? After 19 years, this family finally gets their answers. Tell us the truth. When she was pleading and begging for her life, what did you see in her eyes? Friday, we introduced you to the shocking story of teen murderers who killed an innocent 12-year-old girl by the name of Shanda Scherer. Now, I talked to her mother, Jackie, and her older sister, Paige. They are struggling, as you might well imagine, with feelings, anger, all the things that would be involved if you lost a loved one in this way. Now, today, for the first time, these two family members are going to confront one of these murderers that committed this savage act against their daughter. Here's what happened on Friday. Previously... It was a brutal slaying. 12-year-old Shonda Shera was repeatedly beaten and sodomized for hours. 15-year-old Hope Rippey and three other girls admitted to torturing 12-year-old Cher and burning her alive. Sunday, police arrested 16-year-old Melinda Loveless and Lori Taggett and charged them with murder. The 18-year-old Loveless planned the murder of 12-year-old Shonda Shera to punish Shera for stealing her lesbian girlfriend. These older girls get her out of the house some way. Yes, they put her in the car. Melinda is under a blanket in the back seat, and Melinda came up from behind and put a knife to her neck. The only person that evening out of the four girls that knew Shanda was Melinda Loveless. The other three girls had never met Shanda, had no reason to dislike her. They beat her head in with a tire iron. They stab her. They smash her face in. They sodomize her with a tire iron. They your, certainly your, did. Your baby. Well, that's not all they did. She was alive when they set her on fire. We have another daughter. She has never really dealt with Shanda's death. For about two or three months after her death, I literally could not sleep. I was afraid if I shut my eyes, I would see her burning. It's very hard for me to understand how that could be an exciting night for you. How you could get in a car and know that you're going to kill somebody and that be exciting. After they set Shanda on fire, not once but twice. They went to McDonald's. They went to McDonald's for breakfast and joke that she looked like the sausages. That's right. The only thing that I've ever asked is for these girls to serve their sentence. And the only one that has is Lori Tackett. She's currently serving the remainder of her 60 years at Indiana Women's Prison. I didn't go into that evening knowing anything was going to happen. Peer pressure. That's all it was. Every January, I relive pretty much what happened, and it's it's just extremely hard. I hope every January breaks her more and more down the odor she gets. I've got to tell you something I don't buy. This, gee, this was just peer pressure. That is absolutely, unequivocally crap to me. You cannot tell me that these girls were not bought into this and pursuing it with vigor. Two of them are out of jail. Hope admits yes. that she douses her with gas. Yes. And she's out walking the streets. I was the first person that poured the gasoline on Shanda. And I don't know who lit the fire. It was either Laurie or Melinda. You know, something to start out all like fun and games and it's just going to be, you know, a rowdy night and turn into something so incredibly out of control. Hope Rippey got a judge to completely resentence her, and she shaved 15 years off of her sentence. So I don't feel good about that at all. You all know she is here.
She has agreed to speak to both of you, which I think she damn well should. Forget about these cameras. There is no pressure here. None whatsoever. I'll stay with Paige. Now, in cold blood, a daughter's brutal murder continues. She can come out now. Welcome, Dr. Phil. Hi. Have a seat, if you will. Why did you want to be here today? Um, there were a couple reasons why I wanted to be here. I just felt that it was important that if you had contacted the show and you felt like you needed closure, that if there was anything that I could do to help with that, then I felt like it, it was important for me to be here for that. And <clears throat> I've not apologized to you in court or at any other time because... I just haven't felt it. Do you think I'm sorry is going to change anything? No, okay. I don't. I don't at all. Okay. And um, and that's why I haven't. I feel, I mean, I've always felt like it was not anything that you needed. Or I mean, I don't <clears throat> know necessarily to say needed is appropriate, but... I just have never felt like it was something that I should do, and especially not in a courtroom. And I just, I felt like if this was my opportunity to express that to you, that I should take that opportunity. What do you mean, what they needed? I mean, it's like you're doing them a favor? I, I no, understand. I'm not, no, I'm not trying to do them a favor. That's not, I don't mean it like that. And I don't mean it disrespectfully in any way. And that's why I've never said it. Because I don't, I don't want to be like that. You and are I, like that. And I understand that you feel that way. I don't feel it. I know it. And that's fine. That's, Hope, oh, let me ask you a question. How do you think you could have made this up to us? What could you have done to make this up to us? There, and to Shanda? I don't think that there's anything that I could do to oh, make this up to oh, you. Oh, but there was. There was one thing you could have done. You could have stayed in prison. And you could have served out your sentence. That's what you could have done. There was only one thing you could have done. Because you can't bring her back. You can't make that night go away. You can't take back all that you did to my child. But you could have stayed in jail. And you could have served your sins. That's the only thing that they ask of you. That's the only thing I ask of you. But you had to try over and over and over and over and over because it was always about you and what you wanted. Not about what you should have done. So don't ever say you're sorry because you're not sorry. Do you have children, Hope? God, I hope you never do. I hope nothing good for your life. I'm sorry, but I hope nothing good. Because, see, I get to sit here next to you. She's six feet under because of you. We don't get to see her and sit next to her and talk to her and have interviews with people. I don't know how you get up every day and look at yourself in the mirror. I don't. I didn't think I wanted to speak to you, but I really do want to ask you a question. Why? Why did you do it to her? You didn't even know her. You never met her. I mean, how could you just... How, how can... Tell me how somebody does that. I don't have an answer for you on that. And you I'm did sorry. It. Just tell me. Tell me how you I did, did it. I did. I did do it. I know. I did. So and tell I don't, me how that happens. I don't have an answer for that. I don't. And I'm sorry. Nothing that I have is a justification. That's that's a reason. I, I think, Hope, what I do think you can offer at this point is some honesty and some candor. Absolutely. But, but come on. I've been doing this a long time. You premeditatedly made a plan. You went to these 
th th these people's sister and daughter's door and lured her into a car knowing a woman was laying in the back with a knife and put it to her throat. You participated in all of these assaults and these humiliations. You doused her with gasoline. A human being you, that you didn't even know, you doused her with gasoline. And, and they're wanting to know, who does this? Why did you do that? True? That, that's what you want to know. Yes. That's what happened. Now, now you've denied part, having parts in other of this, but you were there when she was stabbed. You were there when she was hit in the head. You were there when she was lit on fire. And you participated in the setup, the dousing of the gas. So just, hey, I'm a follower, doesn't cover it. Absolutely. So I what is the answer? Coming up. I came on here so that I could tell you the truth. You right, poured the gasoline on her little head while she was begging for my mom. And later, meet the woman Jackie says is the reason her daughter is dead. Amanda Hedlund is a predator. My daughter would still be alive if it weren't for her. When In Cold Blood, a daughter's brutal murder continues. We now return to In Cold Blood, a daughter's brutal murder. Hope Rippey was one of four teenage girls convicted in the brutal slaying of 12-year-old Shanda Cher. Now out of jail, she's facing her victim's family for the very first time. You were there when she was hit in the head. You were there when she was lit on fire. And you participated in the setup, the dousing of the gas. So just, hey, I'm a follower, doesn't cover it. Absolutely. So I, what is the answer? The answer is, is I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know, and I know how pathetic that sounds. That's why I, I just don't <clears throat> know how to answer that with anything that makes any sense. You were alone for at least four hours. Yes. When you didn't have an intimidating person there, you didn't have someone there saying, I'll beat you up if you do this, I'll kill you if you tell. You could have walked into a police station and had full police protection, and that girl might still be alive today if, when you were alone, you had done the right thing. You're right. So don't tell me it was intimidation. No, you were I'm alone. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I know that I absolutely, from the moment it began till the moment it ended, I could have stopped this. Yes, I many understand times. that. Many. I understand it. I completely understand that. And why you did you not? I don't have an answer for that. Well, that I don't that's, have but that's an answer not an for answer. that. But it's the only answer that I have. You're sick. Don't I was a weak person. I was weak and I just still didn't are. know okay. Did you feel power that the four of you had control of her and could make her do anything and do anything to her you wanted to? Was that a high for you at the time? No. Not what, at all. What did you get out of I hurting and murdering anything. this girl? I did not do this to get something out of it. I didn't feel anything out of it. What did you do it for then? What motivated you to do it? Because I was going along with it. And I'm sorry that that sounds like an excuse or that that sounds like an empty response. But that is the truth. You took her watch. You took a little girl's watch. Stripped down in the woods, you took a little girl's watch. What did you see in her eyes? Tell us the truth. Did you look her in the eye? No. When she was pleading and begging for her life, what did you feel? What did you think? I don't, I didn't feel or think anything. I mean, I wasn't. Exactly. And you still don't. Did you have any empathy for her? I did, but I was afraid in the whole, I was afraid. And I'm sorry that that doesn't sound what were you like afraid a good of? enough excuse. I was afraid of the people that I was with. You are one of them. You are one of them. What else were you afraid of? That they were going to do that to you? I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know. You did, you did know. know. You did know. You knew right. You knew before you went and picked her up that's, what you were going to do. I'm sorry, but that's not. The testimony was that Lori told girl. you she was going to kill a little girl that night. That's not. You all even talked was, to Tony about it on the way to there New There was Albany. conversation yeah. that this that Melinda was upset. With she was going to kill a little girl, and that she was going to kill her. Yes. But it was not taken seriously, oh. and I'm, 
I'm sorry. So when I you mean, I came on here so that I could tell you the truth. And I'm sorry if you don't feel like I'm telling you the truth. But I'm doing the best that I can to tell you the truth. And that's why I came out here not to lie to you, not to make up excuses for you, not for any other reason. But I'm, I don't have all of the answers, and I'm sorry for that. Well... I am sorry for that, and I will take whatever punishment you feel like you need to say to me. Anything that you feel like you need to say, I'm. that's fine. But I'm telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. When you were at Melinda's house and she showed you the knife she was going to kill Shanda with, did you not believe it then? No, I did not believe her when she was saying it. I didn't believe her. So when you went to the witch's castle, you still didn't believe it? No, I didn't. So, and I'm so so let me ask you you just do that on a regular basis no you just take people out and do that to them and make them take their clothes off no did this go further than you thought it was going to go yeah it went way further than I thought that it what was did you think go. was going to happen I thought that there was probably going to be a fight I did think that she was going to be beat up and that is horrible and I understand that but that is what I thought was going to happen and that is the extent of what I thought was going to happen I did not think that it was going to go to the extent that it did and by the time that it was that far it felt so out of control I didn't know that there was I didn't feel like there was anything that I could what did do. you participate you're saying that it got out of control but you participated to the very end Right, you poured the gasoline on her little head while she was begging for my mom. You didn't stop to the very end. Did you know that she was going to die then? Yeah, I knew. When you were pouring the gas, you knew this girl's going to I knew be that dead. that was, yes. So you made that conscious decision to participate. Did you ever think about running away? No. Why didn't you tell Mr. and Mrs. Tackett what was going on? I don't, I don't know. I don't know why. I, you know, I've, I've dealt with this for years i've tried to figure this out and i've done everything that i can in my power to try and figure this out in my own head mm -hmm. i know that what i did was horrible mm -hmm. i know that the things that i didn't do were horrible mm -hmm. where do you think you should be today honestly where do you think you should be today do you think you should be sitting in that chair yeah, I do think that I you should do. be sitting in this chair. So it's real that nice that you think you should be sitting in that happen. chair. Because I bet Shanda wishes she could be sitting in that chair. And it's really, really, really sickening that you think that you deserve to be out of prison. I understand that. Do you sleep good at night, Hope? Do you remember what I said to you? I remember what you said to me. Do you? Do you remember what my wish was for, for you? What was your wish for her? Coming up. Will Shanda's family finally get the answers they're looking for? Were you crying when she was burning? Plus, why was Hope smiling in her mugshot after killing an innocent child? And later, who is Amanda Heverin? And why does Jackie believe she was the person who started it all? We now return to In Cold Blood, a daughter's brutal murder. Do you sleep good at night, Hope? Do you remember what I said to you? I remember what you said to me. Do you? Do you remember what my wish was for, for you? Yes, I do. Has that come true? I would say yes. Good. What was your wish for her? Well, part of my wish was that they would stay in, a, in prison the rest of their lives and that their cell would be covered with pictures of her body and that they would hear constant recordings of her screams for help for the rest of their lives. That was my hope for them. And I do hope you're haunted by that. Because I think if you're haunted by that enough, we'll be assured that you'll never do this again. Because I never want anybody to suffer the way my child suffered. I don't either. You were inhuman that night. You were not even, there was not even a hint of being human that night. Dogs don't tear their prey apart the way you all tore her apart. She was 12 years old. She was a beautiful, happy child had her whole life ahead of her, and you took it away. And you destroyed our life. I just want you to always remember what you did. I don't want you to ever live a day that you don't see her face, ever. But there's nothing you can say, and there's nothing you can do. And whether I forgive you or not is totally, totally irrelevant, because your judgment comes later. I have nothing to do with it. Is there anything you would like to say to them? Just that I'm sorry, and that I will do everything that's in my power to try and keep this from ever happening and i i don't know if you think that i could do that that there's anything that i can say or do 
but I mean, if there is, then I will. And I do think about it every day. I don't ever want somebody to have to deal with this again. And not because of what I had to deal with, because of what you went through and what your family went through, because of our decision making, because of our inability to stand up and make the right decisions. Let me just tell you this, unless you have a child and your child is murdered like mine was, you'll never know what, worth, what we've gone through and, and I, what we go through that. every day. But I hear you saying that you knew what you set out to do was bad. You were with a, a, a gang of girls that were going to go get a 12-year-old child and beat them up. And, and you get that that was bad. But you never thought it was going to spiral into someone being tortured for 10 hours and then ultimately killed. That was not in your head when you started. Yes, that's true. But that's what it snowballed into. That is what happened. Do you get the gravity of Absolutely. that? Absolutely. You don't I trivialize that? You don't minimize no, that? Not in, no, not at all. I cannot imagine. No. And no, I don't at all trivialize it at all. And you sit here convicted of murder. Yes. And you said that you were scared at the time. I do get how, how you can be scared at the time. What I don't get is when you had the four hours, you did nothing about it. What I don't get is this picture right here. I know. This is a mugshot where you have been arrested after the death of an innocent child. And you're smiling ear to ear. When I was when I was arrested and I was taken in to the to be fingerprinted and have my mugshot taken, the two detectives that were with me were joking about my age and referring to the fact that they had kids my age and I mean they were just trying because I was upset and I was crying and they were trying to What were you upset and crying about? Because of what had happened and what was going on. Were you, I mean, cry were you crying when she was burning and begging for her mommy? Actually, I was. You were? Yeah, actually, I was. So how did you keep pouring the gasoline on her when she went and, and, and you were crying while you were pouring gasoline? No, I was crying when we left. But you weren't doing it when you were pouring the gas, were you? What made you cry? Because of what had happened. Because... You weren't sad, because if you were sad, you wouldn't have done it, and you would have told somebody. You're not sad today. You just have to deal with it, because you already did it. You will always be a murderer. Were you rehabilitated in prison? I felt like I went through the changes, and I felt that I dealt with a lot of things that led up to that night, and I feel that, you know, I grew up there. And so, I mean, my response to that would be yes. What happened in your life, Hope, that made you capable of this kind of a crime? I don't know that anything happened in my life that made me... I mean, I don't have an excuse like that. I, You know, I didn't have, you know, a horrible childhood where I was abused and, you know, I just was a weak kid. I just was... I don't call somebody that murders a 12-year-old little girl and pours gasoline on her and sets her on fire weak. I'm sorry, but I, that's the furthest thing uh, that I think. Normal people don't do that. I know that. Are you at risk to do this kind of thing again? No. Why not? What do you know now that you didn't know then? I know that no matter what, I would stand up for somebody. And I know that I would make a different decision. I know that. Is there anything else you'd like to say to Hope? You can't do anything to make me better. You can't do anything to make her better. You can't bring Shanda back. And I'll never understand. I don't know how I am sitting here looking at a person who is considered a human being that breathes and speaks and laughs and smiles that is capable of that kind of crime. Is there anything you want to say? Just that. I mean, I understand that you don't forgive me and that you may never and I understand that but truly truly with everything in me I am sorry I truly am and I'm sorry that even saying that sounds I'm sorry I just don't know what else to say how would your parents feel if it was I you six feet under I don't know I don't know you don't know so don't tell us you're sorry Forgiveness is not an issue. She's dead. She suffered. She had no life.
and I don't have to forgive you. No, you don't. Doesn't mean a thing. So never hurt anybody else again. That's all I can ask of you because there's nothing you can do to make my life better. Coming up, Shanda's mother says a fifth girl should have gone to jail for her daughter's murder. Amanda molested my child. Amanda Heverin is a predator. My daughter would still be alive if it weren't for her. And later, Amanda Heverin is here to set the record straight. Did you know Melinda had made a death threat? She told you she was going to kill Shanda, right? When in cold blood, a daughter's brutal murder continues. We now return to in cold blood, a daughter's brutal murder. Melinda Loveless allegedly had an obsession that led to Shanda's horrific killing. What was behind Melinda's reported obsession? Shanda's mother says it all links back to one person, Amanda Heverin. So who is Amanda? And what exactly was her role in this tragedy? As you look back at, at the days or the weeks leading... ...with her, was something happening? Not in the days leading up. In fact, for probably a month or so before the murder, we thought everything was fine. We had no indication at all that anything was bad like it was. Grades were holding? or Grades she were had... great, new friends, happy again. Well, you say happy again. Right. Tell me about well, there the was, dip. The dip was when she got involved with the wrong people and um, became friends with the wrong person. And she was put in a situation where she met a person named Amanda Heverin, and that's what started. That was the beginning of the end. Amanda was older than her. They were put in detention together, actually. That was the very first time she had ever been in trouble in school in her entire life. But they got in trouble together, went in detention, and Shanda was in a school where she was desperate to be accepted. Had no friends, didn't know anybody. Sure. Amanda then put her hand out and said, let me be your friend, and Shanda needed a friend. I knew from the very beginning it was a bad relationship, and it got worse and worse, and Shanda got worse and worse. Everything about her changed. Was Amanda defining this beyond friendship? Oh, yes. Uh, Amanda molested Shanda. There's just no easy way to put that. Amanda was and is a lesbian, which Shanda didn't even know her sexuality. She was 12. She, she was 12. And I saw what she went through, and I read a letter that she wrote to Amanda. And um, I know that there was sexual activity between the two. To what degree, I have no idea. But I know it was enough to devastate my child. I mean, Shanda went through so much shame in her life, to the point where she wouldn't even walk with her head up anymore. She changed her clothes the way she dressed. She was a little girl that primped every morning and gave me a, a little show every night about what she was going to wear the next day and to a child that stayed in her room, didn't want to have contact with anybody, cried constantly, started failing in her grades, wouldn't wear anything but very loose clothing. I mean, you have to know, Shanda was a really good student and very athletic. And I found out she failed phys ed. And I was so angry. I said, how do you fail phys ed? But what I found out later after the murder was that because of what was going on with Amanda and the shame that she had from all that, she wouldn't take her clothes off in gym. She wouldn't dress out. And that's why she failed. She got away from her. Well, I went to Amanda's house and I spoke to her father and I told him, I said, you know, I'm not saying that your child is bad. I'm just saying that our children together are bad. It's not a good combination, and I want you to tell your daughter, I don't want have her to have any more contact with Shanda. Thought things were getting better, and then I got a letter that apparently Shanda had mailed, but forgot to put a stamp on. It, that was the letter that let me know there was physical contact between her and Amanda, and that she was, in fact, still having contact with her after I told her not to. But you think Amanda had a lot to do with this? Amanda molested my child. Amanda Heverin is a predator. My daughter would still be alive if it weren't for her. So you think she's the first link in the chain? She is the first link in the chain. Melinda told her, if you don't stay away from Shanda, I will kill her. Coming up, Amanda Heffron, the pivotal link between Shanda and her killers, sits down with Dr. Phil to give her side of the story. Is she the reason Shanda Scherer is dead? 
We now return to In Cold Blood, a daughter's brutal murder. Was Shanda Cher the victim of a teenage love obsession gone horribly wrong? When Melinda Lovelace and Amanda Heverin's tumultuous relationship went sour, Amanda turned her affections to 12-year-old Shanda. According to prosecutors, Melinda, consumed with jealousy, set her sights on getting Shanda out of the picture and hatched a plot with three other teenagers that left the innocent young girl dead. So who is Amanda Heverin? And what was her relationship with Shanda? When I think of Shanda's murder, it all started when she met Amanda Heverin. That's when life changed. It got to the point where I forbid Shanda to have anything to do with Amanda. I want her to stay away from her. I want her to leave her alone. Her relationship with Amanda Heverin is what made her the victim of this crime because Melinda Lovelace killed her because she was jealous of her relationship with Amanda Heverin. After Shanda had died, and I cleaned her bedroom out. I found in the back of her closet a shoebox full of letters from Amanda Hebron where her and Shanda had went back and forth. I think they had had a sexual experience where Shanda was trying to get away from her. That's not what I like. That's not what I want. You're not a boy. And Amanda kept telling her, trying to persuade her. Amanda was not going to have Shanda get away from her. She wanted that relationship and was going to do whatever it took to have that relationship. And I feel in my heart that if she would have quit pursuing my sister, my sister would not be dead today. And Amanda gets to walk around every day and live her happy little life. I don't even know if she even thinks about what she really caused. And she caused this. I blame Amanda Heverin. Her family feels that you molested their daughter. Well, I mean, you can't molest somebody when she came to me first. I, I never came to Shanda like that. Shanda locked me in her bathroom and made the first move on me, not the other way around. Did you have a sexual relationship with her? Yes. Did you think that because she was only 12 that it wasn't a good idea? I mean, she was seeing boys older than me, so obviously, I mean, she knows what she was getting into. I didn't do nothing to her that she didn't want me to do. What they may call intimate, we was intimate like that, not like a male and female is intimate. Did you know that Melinda had made a death threat against her? Mm -hmm. She told you she was gonna kill her, right? Yes, and I went to uh, the youth prosecutor and told them about it. Uh -huh. What'd you tell? I gave them the letters that uh, Melinda had wrote me and uh, I guess they said they was going to have a, a meeting with the parents, but I never heard anything about it after that. And she confessed to you after the fact, correct? Yes. Did she show you the bloody trunk yes. and Shanda's bloody clothes? Yes. And you didn't tell anybody? No, because I just didn't believe it. Because one minute they were laughing and the next minute they were crying, so it was hard to tell which one which was fake and which was true so you knew she was dead you believe when you heard those details did you believe it i mean part of me did but a part of me didn't did you ever think that you should warn shanda's parents that she had made a death threat against um, her my dad warned them about the letters the youth prosecutor warned them about the letters and everything that was going on they feel like this started with her relationship with you and that you could have said something when they told you, they confessed to you that they killed her. Yeah, I did uh, confess to um, people that they were going to kill her. Mm -hmm. So maybe the authorities could have done more stuff. And maybe her dad could have done something, you know, when those three girls knocked on the door and Shane answered the door and he was like, who is that? And that's what I was told. He <laughs>
whatever. I'm not blaming I'm not blaming anybody but for girls that did it. Well, but it sounds like you're kind of putting something on the father. That... Well, I mean, they're putting it all on me. We've got a dead a dead child here, I understand right? That. I mean, come on. Let, let's not. We don't want to throw rocks at a, at a dead child. Right. I mean, they're throwing rocks at me, though. I understand. You know, I've lost a lot during this. I lost basketball scholarships because of it. You know, I got kicked off the basketball team because of it. You know, there's a lot of things that I lost because of it that I had to sacrifice. They just don't know the story. I didn't come on to Shanda like that. She came on to me. And you're completely at peace with your role in this thing. You don't feel guilty about any aspect of this I mean, whatsoever. You have no no regrets. I mean, I do, and in, in part, feel guilty as far as not telling somebody when I found out. But nobody was calling my house looking for Shanda. So, in reality, I didn't know that it was true because nobody was calling me looking for her. you think that would have been the first place they would call was my house. Well, her mother did call your house, didn't well, she? Well, I never, I never got that message that she called me. My dad may have known and maybe didn't tell me. But did you tell your father that, that these girls had confessed to killing Shanda? I did, like, two, two, three hours later after I was told. But you said you didn't want to get anybody in trouble. Right? That's why you waited to tell? That's not that I want to get anybody in trouble. It's just I didn't know if that would really happen. I didn't want to call and be like, hey, I heard this and it not been true. You said Shanda's mother's made your life miserable? Well, mine and a lot of my family's, yes. You understand they've suffered a tremendous loss. Yeah, that's all about. You seem pretty smug about this, and I would have thought that you would have had a lot more compassion. I, you got, I have had compassion, but just the thought that somebody would call me a child monster upsets me. I understand. Is there anything you want to say to them? I am sorry that this has happened. You know, ultimately, Shane's father paid the price, too, by drinking himself to death, and, and I really am sorry. I mean, it hurts my feelings, or they think I'm a child monster because I'm not. Is there anything you haven't said that you would like to say? I never got to say goodbye to her, you know. You know, I didn't go to go to her funeral. I was threatened not to go to her funeral. And I didn't get to say goodbye to her. I'm not responsible for anything that's happened in Amanda's life. She's responsible for her own actions. I, I didn't I didn't ask my daughter to be murdered. I didn't ask Amanda to molest, to be a predator, to have sex however whatever kind of sex it is that she wants to, to know about with shanda shanda was 12 years old when we talk about molestation it's a different kind of molestation it was if you would have just left her alone and went away maybe she would still be here but you wouldn't just go away when i heard amanda say well you know it's affected me because i got kicked off the basketball team or uh, all the little trivial things that she mentioned that is typical amanda heverin Amanda Heverin was just as guilty and just as culpable as all the other four girls that went to prison. Amanda should have been right there with them. She knew Melinda Lovelace had threatened to kill her. She knew Melinda was going to kill her. She did nothing to stop it. Even after she was shown the bloody trunk, she did nothing. Absolutely nothing. In Cold Blood, a daughter's brutal murder will continue in a moment. Now we turn to In Cold Blood, A Daughter's Brutal Murder. I know that forgiveness is a word that is thrown around so much that it loses its meaning. I don't want these five personalities, Tackett and Tony and Melinda and Hope and Commando. I don't want those five people having power in your life. If you are locked into a, a bitterness and hatred with them, it changes who you are. It has changed me. But there comes a point where you've got to say, I'm not big enough to handle this. I don't have the strength to carry this. And I don't want the people I love to pay for this. I want to celebrate the 12 years I had this precious child. I can't focus on that, that day of her death. I've got to celebrate the 12 years of her life. And sometimes we think that the longer we grieve, that that's directly proportionate to how much we loved. You said, sometimes I feel like I forget her. I'll promise you there have been times when you catch yourself laughing and then you go, oh my God, how can I be standing here laughing? My baby is tortured and dead. It was the, the worst part after she died the first time I laughed. Let me tell you, anger and bitterness is a pervasive emotion. It crowds up everything you do. And it takes courage. You have to stand up and say, I do claim it. Dr. Phil, I give myself permission 
to be joyous. I give myself permission to celebrate her life, celebrate the, the joy that she was. So, I, you know, I don't use forgiveness in a, oh, we must forgive kind of way. I use it in the sense that we got to set ourselves free. When you forgive them, you break that bond with them, and they fly away, and you are left to take all of that energy that was invested in that bond and put it into your life and your children and each other. Oh, thank Talk you very much. I, I just... It will help. She just closes herself well, off, and she, I think she but, does that because of the anger. Yeah. Your face has relaxed since we started talking. So, maybe it's a beginning. You did make me feel better on that line. All right, good. Thank you so much. It could not have been easy to sit before them, but I think you owed it to them. I do, too. And you did it. And it would have been a lot easier not to. But uh, you doing that indicates to me that you're trying to do what you can. The second thing is there's no way to make this right. What you have to do is make the rest of your life right. I mean, like they said, anything short of bringing her back is, is not a fix for them. But what you've got to do is if you've got 30 years, 40 years, 50 years left in this world, you got to spend it doing the right thing in the right way and, and using, using your life and hope you can do that. I'm trying to, and I will always try to, and I think that that is why I was given the opportunity, and I want to take that opportunity. The only way you'll ever create redemption in your life is you got to own this 100% because you made some choices there that went beyond compliance, and you got to own those. It's been an emotional journey for Shanda's family, and I hope all of you at home, especially with teenage children, were taking note. If you want to donate to Shanda Sharer's scholarship fund that Jackie and her family have set up in honor of Shanda, go to drphil.com for more information. Thanks for being here today. So long.